you his final instructions. Well, as we'd expect from you both, you will obey the instructions at all times. When I tell you a break, you both break clean, defend yourselves at all times, and the best of luck to you both. Touch gloves. So over to you, Alex Dilmagani. There's been a lot of talk from him and his promoter. Can he make a statement oh. here? Both of Martin Parlaghi's defeats came in the UK against uh, Marco McCulloch and Ben Jones. Both of those fights, he scored a knockdown, he cut his opponent. And he's going to be an awkward test here for Dil Magani. There's a lot on the line here for Dil Magani, Richie. There is, and it is a tough test indeed, because he's in against a guy here who was unbeaten in his last ten contests. You know, he's only lost two um, in his career. He's a tough, tough kid. He's Pelagi, and he, he'll come to win here. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how Dil Magani has developed. A lot of good sparring, obviously, in Mexico. He's been boxing over in Canada. And just to go around those Mexican gyms and, and get the sparring, and get the, the respect of the Mexican fighters, which apparently he did. That, that's, that's, that's great experience, it really is. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how he's going to develop and how he's come on. Yeah, he went over there and worked with Nacho Berestein, the legendary Mexican trainer. Sparred, as uh, Richie was saying earlier, with the great Juan Manuel Marquez, also sparred with Johnny Gonzalez, Francisco Vargas, um, strong and powerful names the way he tells it and many tell it sparring in those gyms in mexico is more like fighting it's a pretty brutal place he's starting quite positively on the front foot but he's in against an opponent here who keeps switching from orthodox to southpaw and he's letting the shots go also so Pelagi, no mug Dangerous with his right hand, but it's, it's quite a positive start from Dil Magani. Just measuring the distance and gap again with that lead right hand of his. Mexican style actually as he's coming forward on that front foot. Nice high guard. Prepared probably to take a shot to land one. And Palagi certainly he's landing a couple here and there. Well Palagi's got 14 knockouts on his record. One question mark about Dil Magani would be his power. How far can you go at these kind of weights without real sort of equalizing power? Seven knockouts on Dil Magani's record and has that time, particularly in Mexico, taught him that ferocity that maybe he's grown into as well. At the age of 27, we'll see. Left uppercut on the inside there from Dil Magani as Palagi just overbalanced a bit. Well, wasn't he just complaining about the use of the head as well? Yeah, he was, but that wasn't a bad shot there. That was a nice little left uppercut went into the body from Dil Magani. Boxing quite a well-educated first round here. We're behind that right hand, keeping the guard nice and high, trying to block the shots, what's coming back. A fairly close round, I thought, this opening round. Dil Magani. Stayed nice and tight, lovely right hook to the body there. Pelagi always came back with something, but nice little shots on the inside from Dil Magani. So Alex Dil Magani from uh, Crayford in Kent in those gold trunks. The South Southport here against Martin Pelagi and the largely black trunks, the Slovak. And now uh, fights out of the Czech Republic from Eastern Slovakia originally near uh, Kozica. Certainly come to fight. He has, and what he's got to do here, Pelagi, he's got to target the left up more than his right hand. He keeps moving round to his right. He keeps walking on to the left of Dil Magani. But he's got to watch out for the uppercut from, from Dil Magani because I think that's a, that's a good shot that he's got. 
Hilmagani's digging to the body as well and testing Palagi's fitness here and conditioning. Must be strange for him. First fight on these shores for five and a half years after that time in uh, Mexico and Canada, learning his craft and now sort of re-announcing himself as a different fighter. It adds to the pressure, certainly. Another good body shot there from Dilmagani. Just made Alagi just go back a little bit there. You can see he got caught with a good shot. And the fighter gets caught to the body and he feels it. He'll, he retreats. It just gives it away. Dilmagani again. It's, it's a good display up to now. He's staying nice and tight. Trying to block the shots that are coming back. But there's that left uppercut downstairs. That's a good shot. Certainly in control now here, Dil Magani. <laughs> left to the body there from Palagi got Dil Magani's interest. Palagi just changed the tactics slightly here now, Dave. He was on the back foot earlier on. Now he's trying to get up close to, to Dil Magani. But he's taking too many risks by doing that. That's why he's just gone back on the outside. Just got caught with a couple of good shots there. And just changed tact a little bit. Tried to get close, but his guard isn't that great. And Dil Magani is getting through with the shots. He's unorthodox, Palagi, which I suppose makes him dangerous, but... Makes him vulnerable as well, particularly to the body. Dil Magani's been firing under those elbows. I think Palagi's just getting a little bit lost in there at the moment. Not quite sure what to do. Palagi just showing the odd sign of struggling towards the end of the round there, Dave. Got caught with a couple of good body shots. Dil Magani, very well schooled, isn't he? Good shots downstairs, but also good straight punches also. Yeah, he doesn't waste much energy, Dil Magani. It's all very efficient the way he goes about his business. Dil Magani in those gold trunks. Back in the UK, taking on the Slovak here, Martin Palagi. Needs to find a way into this fight, Palagi. Yeah, he's not been given any real time to, to breathe, is he? Palagi, everything he's doing, he's trying to keep on the outside and Wants a breather here and there, but Dil Magani's just walking him down. And Palagi is making mistakes here and there, and probably he'd have got away with it against other boxers, but here he's getting punished every time he's making a mistake. That was a typical example as he come forward there. The feet just come square, and he just gets caught with that little left uppercut to the body. to do something to discourage Dil Magani, who's been on the front foot right from the start here. And wouldn't say landing at will or with impunity, but he's been landing plenty enough and hurtful shots too. Now for Palagi just open a bit as well after those hurtful body shots from Dil Magani, and that's been the real feature of this performance so far. Every boxer, Dave, has got a certain rhythm and tempo. And Dil Magana here, just coming forward, just walking his opponent down, and has never really taken a back foot step. And Palagi, he's tough, he really is, but he's got to try and do something different. He's got to try and push Dil Magani backwards, but it's not happening at all. And Dil Magani just keeps coming forward, and slowly but surely, he's just dismantling his opponent here. Dig to the body there with both left and right from Dil Magani. They are going to take their toll on Palagi. We're only in the third of ten. A 
And he's really breathing heavily now, Palagi. Yeah, and he's not breathing every heavily because of, of the work he's doing, David. It's because he's getting caught with punches. When you're caught with good shots, it takes it out of you and it makes you more and more tired. And that's what's happening here. So far, it's been a nearly perfect welcome home for Alex Dilmagani. Three efficient opening rounds. So let's just give it to him. Total. Yeah. And remember, go downstairs and come straight upstairs and double the attack up again for me. Yeah. Up the volume now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lee Wilkins there in the Alex Dilmagani corner. Nice, calm advice, happy with the way it's going. Wanted him to double up the jab to try and set up everything else. But you've been impressed so far, Richie. Yes, I have. I think it's been a well disciplined, well schooled display up to now. He hasn't uh, put a glove wrong, to be quite honest. Walking his opponent down, who I don't think is a bad opponent. This kid's fairly strong. Won his last, uh, sorry, undefeated in his last ten, I think, won his last nine, and he's drew one. So this guy knows how to win, he's used to winning. But here, when he makes the mistakes, he's getting caught. And yeah, I'm impressed with Dilmagani up to now. And Kalagi's last five wins were against what you'd respectfully call journeymen, but one of those ten fights is a draw against Oleg Yefimovic, albeit a 35-year-old Oleg Yefimovic, former European featherweight champion. Not the worst form line, Dilmagani He's looking impressive against him. I think, Dave, you can see what he's picked up and learned in those Mexican gyms because he, he's boxing very much like a Mexican boxer, the way they're famous for, aren't they? The way they just close their opponent down, front foot pressure, taking shots to, to land them. And um, yeah, you can certainly see signs of where he's been and what he's picked up. Just that sense of relentlessness, isn't it? Every time you look up, they're standing in front of you, and that's what Dilmagani's done here with Palagi. Like I say, he's not letting up, is he? He's just not giving his opponent any time to recover. He's got to stay switched on, though. Well, that's, that's the it. important part, probably, for him now, Dave Dilmagani. He's got to keep concentrating. And uh, don't let complacency, complacency creep in, because it, it can when you're so far ahead. But this guy, I think, Palagi, is still dangerous. Slightly unnerving character, Palagi. Does everything with a smile on his face. Perhaps gives you the impression things are going better than they are. I already mentioned it, Richie, but I'm also impressed by. The economy of movement and effort from Dilmagani. Everything he does has a purpose. Short straight lines in the ring and really good body shape as well. He's measured and he's economical with his work. Dilmagani doesn't waste a lot, does he? Prepare to take his time. Closing seconds of the fourth, Dilmagani on top here. As soon as you get one in Brooks, man, then go. Yeah. Another dominant round for Dilmagani. And Palagi just staying on the outside. Hasn't got an answer to it at all. Well, you just start to wonder what. Martin Palagi can do here to try and turn this back at least towards his favour, if not in his favour. As the way this fight's developing, the pattern of it so far, it's, uh, it's going to be a long 10 rounds for him. He has got 14 knockouts in his 25 victories, so he can punch a bit, Palagi. And like I say, probably that left up that he needs to try and deliver. Dilmagani is coming forward. That's a rare mistake from Dilmagani there, throwing that left hand and just missed the target. But Palagi 
didn't capitalise on that. It's given Parnaghi a little bit of confidence as well. Yep. A little bit wild with those punches. I think one of the right hands might just have uh, clipped Dilmagani. And then back to that left to the body. Well, we spoke about that left uppercut right at the very start of the contest. And uh, a couple of good shots going in from Dilmagani again downstairs, and they will tire. Well, add to the tiredness of Palagi, most certainly. Palagi's certainly gesturing that those punches aren't hurting him. Sneaking those hooks to the body. Uh, round that elbow. Well directed there from Dilmagani. It's better round this for Palagi. Nowhere near winning it. Dilmagani still on top, but showing a bit more the slow back. Yeah, just holding his ground occasionally a little bit more, isn't he? Palagi. He's had a bit of success. But again, not being given any time at all to recover for a breather. Dilmagani very fit indeed. I think he recognises when when Pelagi wants a breather, wants to wants to ease up a little bit, and then he's just on that front foot again. Well, you can't question Dilmagani's preparation. He has come in terrific shape and ready for this challenge. Final 30 seconds of round number five. I don't know if he's justified the hyperbole of the best kept secret in boxing yet, but he's been impressive so far. Yeah, word there from John Latham. A little bit too low from Dilmagani, which is often the, the risky run when you look into the body as often as him. Good stuff again from Dilmagani in this round, but uh, it was the first time we've seen Pelagi actually come forward and push Dilmagani back occasionally. Maybe even got a share of the round. It was a much closer round that one. Good relationship in that corner with uh, Lee Wilkins, isn't it? Just telling him to relax and breathe and enjoy it. That's what all the hard work is for. Certainly looked on edge in that. Uh, interview we heard earlier where none of the answers stretch beyond uh, two or three words but uh, got a law degree and a very engaging character i'm sure we'll hear him be a little bit more effusive after the fight with mark should uh, should he win it of course He's well on the way to doing that Success for Pelagi, but Dilma Dani comes back again, just switches downstairs that little left hand, switches the attack and head to body so well. Dilma Dani, Pelagi making it clear that he's uh, he's not really feeling the power here from Dilma Dani. A few uh, intelligent and learned observers were. Talking to me this week, saying that could be an issue for Dilmagani going forward. The lack of a real pop in his punches for all the work rate and the relentlessness and the accumulation of uh, of quality punches. It's still better if you have that power to keep your opponent off. See, Pelagi is having some success. He's holding his feet a little bit more and holding his ground, and uh, he's getting the shots up for shots off first but then he just goes back on that back foot he wants a bit of a breather and that's when Dilmagani just steps forward won't allow him then that time 
and that's the problem that Pelagi's got. Does some good work here and there. But Bill Magana just gets back on that front foot, closes him down and makes him makes the opponent punch. I would say it's a classic case of Bill Magana, he's boxing at his pace. And he's making the opponent box at his pace, and that's the probably the key to his success here. And yeah, Palagi struggle with that. Single right hand there from Palagi. Gave him a little bit of encouragement, but going back to the point you were making about that Mexican style. Palagi tried to take a breather there, looked up, and there was Dilmagani chasing him down. Flurry again from Palagi towards the end of the round. And of course, uh, after this, we will have our main event from Victoria Warehouse. This man, Huey Fury, back in action after defeat by Kubrat Pulev at the end of last year. Should come back with a victory, a confidence boost for Huey Fury against the Canadian, the former lumberjack, Chris Norad. We look forward to that as our main event later on. The moment we're watching the prospect, if he can be a prospect at the age of 27, Alex Dilmagani. And he's going well here against the man from Slovakia, Martin Parlaghi. And if Parlaghi is going to actually contend in the fight, Richie, he's got to make something change, probably now. Yeah, I mean, there were signs in that last round where he started to push Dilmagani back a little bit, but he couldn't sustain it, and he's got to do that a little bit more. Awesome. When you hear the uh, the snippets of Dilmagani's time in Mexico, and it's a fascinating thing for a, a British fighter to do, it makes you want to sit down and uh, talk to him about it. He says he lived in something that was approaching a ghetto. Dangerous life on the streets there, and uh, the daily grind, and the, the almost brutality of the gym as well, hardened him in uh, many different ways, in and out of the ring. Again, Palagi suggesting that was low. Yeah, great boxing education for Dilmagani going out there in Mexico. There's not many have gone out there and, and held their own. He lived out there and went to all these gyms and sparred the best. And he's really has learned from it. There's that left up there we spoke about from Pelagi. That's the shot he needs to concentrate a little bit more on. He's probably just going to get a little bit closer. He'll try and catch Dil Magani as he's coming forward and as he throws that jab, try and time it then to whip it over that lead hand of his opponent. And bring him onto it. But when those successes are just coming from single shots, they're not really going to take Palagi anywhere. Threw it a couple of times there and looks again for that left hook. There you go. Made Dilmagani miss there as well. Another good little period of the fight from Palagi, but he's not putting any of those periods together. No, it's fleeting success, isn't it, from him? And then he's back on the outside. Wants a little bit of a breather. But Gil Magali not allowing him to do that lovely shot, lovely jab. Basic of all punches, that jab, and he's landed that very well there, Gil Magali. to get out of that corner here, Palagi. Just for a moment, it looked like he was in a bit of trouble there. I think Dilmagani here, Dave, has got to concentrate a little bit more on the body shots. He's in against a very tough opponent, hasn't been stopped, he's only lost twice, remember, on points, so he's a, he's a tough nut. So he's got to try and whip those shots downstairs. And that may just have more of an effect on him. Because this guy's tough. 
So you've got to try and slow those feet down with the body shot. All right. Yeah, it's still remember, it's too many singles for me. Okay. All right. Definitely my line. Yeah, Have a listen to the uh, Dil Magani corner. All right. Yeah. One for you to go through. Just look. The jab's landing. I want, I want you to go through it now. Okay. Yeah. Just waiting a little bit too long. Get a little bit just through. Loosen up. Listen, just loosen up a little bit. Yeah. You've got to work. Listen, you ain't got your engine, mate. No. All right. There's no point in leaving all the reserve. You train too hard. No, yeah, yeah. There was a couple of good body shots went in there. Left uppercut and kept the attack going. Palagi gets caught with there, that right hook. Responds Smart, okay. well. As soon as he lands and catches it, throw. Yeah. Yeah? Because he's throwing wild, you're not. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so every time you're looking at where he's throwing, yeah? land on it. Yeah. Pretty clear instructions there from Lee Wilkins. Three rounds remain. Alex Dilmagani of Crayford in those gold shorts against the man from Eastern Slovakia, Martin Parlagi. Dilmagani's won every round so far. I don't think you can argue about that. Parlagi's main hope lies in those left hooks that he's thrown and not necessarily connected with. Parlagi felt that was low. John Latham let it continue. I think he's hurt there. I think he might have hurt his left hand here. Yeah, he's just throwing that hook, but just shaking that hand out a little bit. Yeah, he's in agony now, Parlagi. And he's not going to be able to continue here. It is the left hand. It's a win. A stoppage for Alex Dilmagani. And that's a shame that Parlagi has been game here and has fought hard. It should have to finish that way for him. And a little bit of an anti-climax as well for Dil Magani, but still a good performance and a good win for Dil Magani. Oh, it was a great win, I thought. He was against, in against a tough kid there who hadn't been stopped. He's only lost two contests in the 28 that he's had. Let's have a look here. Maybe he just landed, he gets caught with that body shot. But that shot before that he threw, Maybe it was the knuckle, I don't know, it landed funny. Something's definitely happened because, you know, look, he's, he's, his hand goes down straight away. Was it his hand, was it his shoulder? I don't know, but there's some pain there and he couldn't continue. That's a shame, but Bill McGarney, I thought, very impressed with him tonight. I just wonder if he hyperextended there as he threw that, uh, that left hook and it... Maybe in the shoulder as well. Well, he'll be well looked after, which is the main thing. And he'll come again. I'm trying to hear what the doctor was saying there. That's why I'm asking. That's why I'm asking because I've seen him long time now. It was a tough enough night anyway, day for him, wasn't it? He wasn't winning the contest. Four or five years ago. Okay. He's talking about an old injury, isn't he? He's keeping having recurring injuries. A lot of fights was before. Yeah. Box set points, baby. Well, Dil Nagani can have a smile on his face. <laughs> Casual, wasn't it? The conversation between the doctors in the corner, but they seem pretty much in control. Yeah, shake of the head there from Palagi. And a nice uh, moment between the fighters. And a win for Dil Magani. Ladies and gentlemen, the official end of this contest falls at 44 seconds of round number eight. Referee John Latham has stopped the contest. In his professional opinion, Martin Parlagi is in no position to continue. Your winner and win at number 19 of his professional career, Alex Dulmagani. So he's back five and a half years since he fought in the UK and Alex Dilmagani is back 